Many thanks for joining us. Now, Ghana has so far expended over 10 billion CDs on the fight against COVID-19. In the last eight months of 2020, Ghana's COVID-19 expenditure summed up to 8.1 billion CDs. Now, from January to June this year, an additional 2.3 billion CDs were spent. The World Health Organization in Africa is warning of a possible fourth wave in COVID-19 infections across the continent. The organization says the mass movements of people coupled with the unavailability of vaccines could be a huge driver in the expected spike in cases. It adds that only about 4.9% of Africans are fully vaccinated, leaving a majority of the continent's population very vulnerable. Dr. Machidosu Moeti is Regional Director of the World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa. She spoke at a media press briefing Thursday. What we know is that very likely there will be cases going up again. At the moment, cases are going down in most countries, but we see them going up in some other countries as well at the same time. So I think we cannot say that the pandemic is disappearing. Uh, not by any means. And as I said in my remarks, we can probably anticipate that there'll be a wave of cases going up at the end of the year because that's when people have a break for the festive season. They go home, they gather and uh, travel. And, and as the situation where we are now with the level of vaccination relatively low and the situation also of the fact that in many places, uh, People are tired of the prevention measures. You know, there's a need to re-engage them on sustaining the use of masks when you are going to be in contact with people, keeping a distance, uh, those, those public health measures that we have talked about many times. So that combination of factors, we believe, and the fact that um, there are variants emerging all the time, and some of the variants we have seen are more liable to, are more infectious, if you like. Uh, one person can infect more people than others. So as long as we are in a condition, in a situation where the vaccination rates are relatively low, uh, public health measures, preventive measures are needing to be reinforced. Things like um, this community-based testing using uh, rapid, rapid diagnostic tests. So I believe we increasingly have the tools at our disposal, and this initiative we're talking about today will be a very important uh, possible way of preventing or being able to, to contain an upward surge that we are absolutely expecting towards the, the end of the year during the course of the festive season. So we are not at all uh, seeing the pandemic disappearing, and we must work very hard to get the vaccination rates up, very hard to get our knowledge at the local level of where the virus is circulating and then to reinforce the prevention measures. So that is the World Health Organization's warning there. We're joined on Zoom by Dr. Michael Ousu, a virologist with the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research in Tropical Medicine. And he joins us. Mr. Uh, Dr. Michael Ousu, thank you very much for joining us here on Newsnight. First of all, let's start with the uh, warning from the WHO about the uh, third, uh, fourth wave, which we're likely to see uh, during the, I mean, going to the end of the year. What is your take on that? Yeah, good evening to you and a good evening to all your, your viewers. So this is uh, a possibility that uh, uh, public of uh, experts, epidemiologists, virologists, all think that I mean, it's something that you cannot rule out. Uh, because if you look at the nature of the virus, uh, we are not done with, with, with it yet. Uh, as you already know, every wave is, 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 is accounted for by the strain of the virus. We, ha I mean, we have experienced this Delta variant across the world. As we speak now, it looks as if the Delta variant has reached a point of saturation. So I mean, it is no more able to cause uh, massive uh, infections across. But then as the strength of this Delta variant begins to weigh down, it is possible it may lead to re-emergence of another strain altogether, which may have the capacity to cause a fourth wave. So this is in theory. It, it is something that you can't prevent. It is likely to happen. Coupled with the fact that the vaccination, uh, as we speak now, uh, rate is quite slow. Mm -hmm. and the number of people who are fully vaccinated is, is low. Indeed. Not only but in many African countries. So, I mean, once you are not catching up with, your, with the level of vaccination, what it means is that the virus has 
more susceptible populations to infect, to mutate, and to do whatever it wants to do. So uh, I think it's a big challenge to, uh, to many African countries, which the WHO, I believe, is warning that if things continue to stay as they are in the African continent, then it is very possible that by the time we get through Christmas and many activities begin to interact, people are coming, doing their own things. These activities may likely contribute to, to a fourth wave, like what we saw happen in last Christmas before this third wave uh, mm. happened. So, so, like you rightly said, and like the WHO, Dr. Moeti also pointed, uh, two th major things may be attributed to this. The slow drive in vaccination and also the fact that there are mutations going on every now and then. Uh, you, you, you realize that many people, and we brought our reports uh, from Kumasi last week, where uh, the health authorities are worried about the slow rate of vaccination. People are not showing up for the second jabs uh, anymore. This was just yesterday. Uh, how dire could a fourth wave be, seeing that the slow rate of vaccination may be as a result of the reduced death, as it were, that we are seeing right now? Yes, I mean, exactly. Uh, people are maybe quite tired. Uh, others also feel that, well, enough is enough. Whatever happens should happen. So, I mean, across the country, the fear for the virus is almost gone. And everybody feels everything is fine. And this is, this is what mostly puts us in trouble. So, I mean, once you don't have people much eager and willing to, to take the full dose of vaccine, mm. then of course, I mean, it's going to pose a challenge. But like other countries are doing, perhaps uh, it may have to be mandatory at a point in time. I mean, if people are reluctant to take the vaccines, then we will expect government to come in and begin to enforce in a way to say that, if you don't take a vaccine, you cannot engage in some activities or you have to be tested for some number of times. The countries in France and many other European countries are doing. Because, I mean, if we don't do this, what it means is that all of us may be affected. I mean, I have to take my vaccine, but if somebody doesn't take the vaccine, the person may contribute to transmission. It will put all of us back to another wave of infections that may cause so much havoc to all of us. I mean, talking of how the fourth wave will be like, I mean, Every wave, the strength of every wave is almost 50 to 80% much stronger okay. I mean, than the previous one. So the, in terms of severity of disease, number of infections, and the likelihood of death is likely to increase. Because the virus come up, I mean, with an additional I mean, strength. And that is how they behave. I mean, they need much stronger capacity to be able to, I mean, cause that kind of infections across board. So okay. it, it, we always have to work to the point where we don't want it to even happen not to think of uh, what it's going to do. So we need to appeal to the population to as much as they can uh, take the vaccines. The vaccines are, are hardly available, but the government does I mean, its best to bring out these vaccines, that we have to ensure that we patronize these vaccines, take it and protect ourselves, and also protect uh, other people. Mm. Dr. Husu, kindly hold uh, the line for me. We just want to find out uh, what our COVID-19 dashboard is looking like. You're talking about helping people understand uh, what the situation is. And so we just pulled this up uh, to bring this into perspective. And so these are the total number of cases recorded so far uh, since February 2020 uh, till now, October, till October 7, uh, we have 128,300 and 68 cases uh, so far. These are the cases we've recorded. Now, in terms of the active cases, uh, and this is the, uh, the wave. So we are seeing three waves here. This is the first wave. We had, it went up to about 8,395 cases for the first wave. And this is June 18, uh, 2020. Let's look at the second wave, uh, how this rose uh, during the second wave. So for the second wave, uh, 2021 20, February, uh, just about a year after we recorded, uh, you know, the case, we had uh, 8,216 8, COVID-19 infections. This was for the second wave of, of COVID-19. Let's now look at the third wave of COVID-19 cases. And the third wave, it, the peak was 7,511 uh, cases. This is September uh, 2021, which is the wave in which we are now. And so that is what it has been so far. Um, and so for our active cases now, we have uh, 2,696 
uh, currently, people who are currently infected with COVID-19. And the total death, and I think this is very important, Dr. Wusu, as we look at this, um, we have 1,158 people uh, who have died so far as a result of COVID-19 from February all the way to the October uh, 7, 2021. So that is what the dashboard is looking like uh, right now. Uh, Dr. Wusu, the World Health Organization again says that it is going to roll out a program that will help African countries increase their testing capacity. Do we need that right now? Yes, I mean, if you follow what the WHO is saying, uh, if, you, if you have to look at the benchmark that they have set, that we need to at least have uh, close to about 10 to 100 tests for every 10,000 populations, and over 20 countries uh, in Africa are not reaching that benchmark, uh, it's because we also depend on the PCR for testing. Okay. But the WHO, through many other organizations, have conducted evaluation studies on a number of rapid diagnostic test kits, which are performing very well. Most of them have sensitivity almost equivalent to the PCR. So the plan for WHO is to roll out these rapid diagnostic test kits in places that I mean, could likely be experiencing outbreaks, uh, large pandemics at particular hotspots. What it means is that you don't need to take uh, swaps to to labs that to do PCR, okay. but the doctors, nurses, and even, I mean, yourself, you can perform your own antigen tests and then find out your status. By doing this, you'll be able to predict uh, possible uh, fourth waves or maybe waves that are to come even before they happen. Uh, because of the low testing capacity, it's difficult to predict. We are always caught up in the wave. Mm -hmm. But ideally, if we are to do consistent testing, in different populations at different points in time, you can tell whether cases are rising or not. So to be able to meet the benefit of WHO, WHO believes that this RDT kit is going to at least boost testing capacity by about 40% and enable many African countries to be able to meet the benchmark target. And I think this is very good for us. I mean, Ghana has, has an antigen antibody testing policy, and I think that this is not something new. Once WHO rolls this out, I believe the ministry will collaborate to get, make this available as much as possible for anybody at all. I mean, to be able to test yourself on your status and then at least visit the hospital if you feel you are sick. I think yeah. it's something that achieved and we need to encourage them, uh, them to, to do. Well, we'll see how this pans out. Thank you very much. That's a Dr. Michael Ousu, a virologist at the KCCR.